Hello there. Welcome to Just the Dis. My name is Brian, and we talk about Blu-rays here. And for this episode, uh, I am going to be focusing on some of my favorite Blu-ray releases from 2021. And I've decided to break this down into, I think, three videos. Uh, the first will be single title releases, no box sets, uh, and no 4Ks. And then I will do a 4K highlight video and a box set video. Um, those will be much shorter, I think, than this round because there's a whole lot of titles to talk about. Um, and I'll try not to drag this out too much. I may not go too deep on some of these, but just know if it's in this episode, it is definitely both a movie that I enjoyed very much and probably also a Blu-ray package that I enjoyed very much. And I should preface as I try to do with these lists by saying that my qualifications for favorite Blu-ray may be a little different than some in that, like I said, I do like the disc to have some nice special features, but in all cases, it's all about the movie first. So these are movies that I like very much. And the, you know, extras are not extraneous, but they are not the most important part for me. So you're seeing basically a list of my favorite movies that have come out on Blu-ray as well as, you know, the ones that have good features, but it's all about the movies. So I'm going to start with the heavy hitters first in terms of favorites. Uh, I'll start with Over the Edge. This is from Arrow Video. This was a UK release, but it is region free. This is one of my favorite films of all time, you know, top 10 material. And it's all about sort of a teenage rebellion, a group of kids in a small planned community uh, wherein the adults did not take into account that these kids have a whole lot of energy and they don't necessarily have a place to put it outside of a small rec center that the town has provided for them. And thus they get into lots of nefarious doings, including drugs and generally beating each other up and, you know, trying to take over their school and just go crazy. And, uh, it's, I think the first role for Matt Dillon and he's fantastic in it. Um, there's an actor named Michael Kramer who plays the lead, uh, as Carl and he's wonderful. Uh, and then you have Vincent Spano, uh, Pamela Ludwig, um, Harry Northup as a uh, sheriff. And it's just a fantastic movie. And one that I've waited for a Blu-ray for, for years. And this did not disappoint there is your um, cover. I love this slip. It's a really specific um, material that's like the uh, King of New York 4K, my friend Keith pointed out. And yeah, it's like this really, it's just really nice to hold. Anyway, so here's the disc. And uh, as you can see, the back is just crammed with stuff, including uh, the old commentary with Jonathan Kaplan, the director, and uh, a new commentary uh with michael kramer and uh journalist michael mike Sachs, uh a really wonderful uh multi-part retrospective documentary newly recorded uh interviews with the cast and crew including jonathan kaplan uh tim hunter one of the co-writers charlie haas one of the co-writers uh the talent scouts the actors including matt dillon Vincent Spano, panel, Tamela Ludwig. They talked to so many people. It's such a wonderful documentary and a really great um, reason why this disc is at the top. I mean, it's it would be even if that wasn't there, but there's a ton more stuff here. It's just a really great release from Arrow and one that I was so happy to get and was not even remotely dissatisfied with. And speaking of that, this is a brand new one from Kino. And it is Get Crazy, Alan Arkish's film Get Crazy from 1983. And this one, um, unlike Over the Edge, which, you know, has been available on DVD and you could stream it if you wanted to, Get Crazy has been widely unavailable for the majority of its life as a film. Um, it came out in 83. It got a very abbreviated um, theatrical release and then a VHS release, and that was it. And you could stream it here and there, but I just feel like 
it's a movie that is relatively unknown because of that lack of availability, which is sad. Um, Because this is a great uh, sister film to Rock and Roll High School, Alan Arkish's film, uh, a couple before this. And it is a very personal film in that it is sort of rooted in the time he worked as like a stage manager for the Fillmore East, which is a music venue in New York. Very um, great venue, which had a lot of great folks playing there. The Who, uh, you know, um, I want to say Led Zeppelin and some, just tons of high-end folks uh, playing there. And Alan's always been a very music-oriented guy, which you certainly can take away from Rock and Roll High School. But this um, was going to be more of a coming-of-age thing. And then the powers that be wanted it to be more of an airplane style comedy. So it is that, and, but it's, you know, sort of a joke a minute kind of thing, but it's also got its roots firmly in the Marx brothers and stuff like that. And so it's all about this theater planning its new year's Eve bash. Uh, Daniel Stern plays the Alan Arkish character and Alan Garfield is sort of the uh, guy who runs the theater. And then you have, Malcolm McDowell is Reggie Wanker, this rock star, and Lou Reed shows up, and it's a delightful film, and I really love it, and I'm so glad it's available in a new 2K Master, and um, widescreen, it's never been released on physical media in widescreen, it has a new audio commentary with Arkish, Eli Roth, and filmmaker historian Daniel Kramer, uh, something called After the Party, uh, this documentary with the cast and crew, which is just wonderful, and it is, you know, a Zoom based thing, but that said, Alan Arkish talks to so many people. He talks to Daniel Stern and Malcolm McDowell and Ed Bagley Jr. and, um, you know, the s- people who did the costumes and the editors. And it's, it's an hour and 15 minutes and it is just del- delightful. It's really neat to see everybody, you know, reminiscing about this film and, and enjoying it. And yeah, it's just absolutely great it has three music videos including the sparks doing the title track and uh two by the nada band which is a all-girl band that appears in this film doing the original video in back in 83 and then an updated version with all the band members now and that's also very wonderful um so this really just blew me away like i would have been happy with just the movie and instead, we get this wonderful documentary with all these great interviews and so many good stories. So I can't recommend Get Crazy enough. It's just one of my favorite comedies. And I'm so glad it's available now for people to see it. Boy, I'm moving slow. I got to quicken it up a bit here. All right, let's talk about W.C. Fields, uh, one of my favorite comedic forces. Uh, it's a Gift is maybe my favorite comedy, um, all about him and his family. He, pay- he plays henpecked husbands in both of these and... Uh, he's super fun and the bank dick had been a criterion DVD prior to this. Uh, it's a gift had only been on DVD and never on anything else, but hasn't streamed really. So these haven't really been available, um, for a lot of people to see and they both have commentary tracks. And I was just very excited that, you know, one of my favorite films finally gets a Blu-ray release and it looks good and it's just so funny. Um, I won't go deep on the comedy. I've talked about this one before, I think, but um, a must-have, an absolute must-have, both of these, uh, W.C. Fields fans or not. Um, Okay, next we have a couple Richard Dreyfuss films from Imprint. We have Let It Ride, which uh, I think these are two of Dreyfuss' best performances, by the way, Um, and The Big Fix. Now, Let It Ride is a gambling movie. He plays uh, a guy named Jay Trotter, who's a cab driver, uh, whose buddy is played by, um, what is it? Michael jo- David Johansson, sorry, uh, of Buster Poindexter and the New York Dolls fame. And they are gamblers and he gets a tip on a horse. Dreyfus Jay Trotter does, and it leads into what could be the luckiest day of his life or maybe not. Um, and it's, just one of my favorite gambling movies ever. It's just a fantastic comedy and I'm really glad that imprint put it out. I'll definitely bring up some more imprint titles. Um, as we go, this one's region free. This one is region locked. This had come out via, um, the big fix had come out via twilight time previous to this, but this edition has some better extras, uh, commentary and interviews with the director. And it's just a great 
detective film. Moses Wine is a great, you know, uh, ex-radical kind of detective, and Dreyfus plays him perfectly. Uh, so I have to recommend both of these together as a Dreyfus double bill. Uh, this one has some great features on it as well. Um, keeping them moving here. Okay, two from Indicator. These are two Howard Hawks films. Uh, they are very different in their tone. Uh, the Criminal Code is, you know, from 1930, and it is sort of a prison drama with Walter Houston and uh, Boris Karloff. And yeah, just really, really great movie that hadn't been on Blu-ray. And 20th Century is more of a screwball comedy type with John Barrymore and Carol Lombard is set in the sort of world of uh, theater and theater then going into movies and Barrymore is over the top, but he is absolutely hilarious. Um, They both have wonderful special features. Uh, Indicator is definitely one of my favorite labels out there, as I've expressed, I think, several times on this channel. But these are two of my favorite releases from them this year. I do hope we get to see more classic film uh, entries like these. Uh, But as a Howard Hawks fan, I was absolutely delighted to get two of his films on the same day from one of my favorite labels. So Criminal Code and 20th Century, highly recommended. Next, we have a couple from the folks or the folk the guy, Jonathan Hertzberg, my friend at Fun City Editions. We have Jeremy and Rancho Deluxe. I recommend all their titles, all of them they've put out uh, this year, including Smile and um, Walking the Edge, definitely. And these are all worth it. I think these are my two favorites. Uh, Jeremy's a coming-of-age love story between Robbie Benson and Glennis O'Connor, and it is truly touching and really, really powerful and just a great movie and uh, has a really great interview with Robbie Benson and Glennis O'Connor that is, you know, kind of emotional, actually. One of my favorite special features on any disc this year. And then Rancho Deluxe is sort of a cult comedy about two modern day cattle rustlers played by uh, Jeff Bridges and Sam Waterston. And the supporting cast is out of this world, includes Elizabeth Ashley and Clifton James and Slim Pickens and Harry Dean Stanton. And it's just a blast. It's a Frank Perry movie and it's uh, sort of a comedy and I love it. It's one of my favorite movies also. So two great ones. This one actually, sorry, this this has uh, an interview with Jeff Bridges. Um, and it's really neat to see him talking about this movie and how much it meant to him. He met his wife on the film and... Anyway, great movies, fun city editions, obviously highly recommended from me. These are two of my favorites. Okay, keeping it moving along here. What's next? All right. Something from Shout Factory. We have Joe Dante's film Explorers. Um, This is a really nice special edition Blu-ray. This one had not been available on Blu-ray up to this point. And it includes both the video and theatrical cuts of the film. So there's some additional footage there. Uh, and then there's this science uh, science fiction fairy tale, The Story of Explorers, which includes new interviews with Joe Dante, screenwriter Eric Luke, star Ethan Hawke, and more. And then we have deleted scenes with optional commentary by Dante. I think they're from like his VHS tapes. Um, and that's really neat to see the pieces that didn't make it, including this party scene that he really wanted to keep in and... I just, I really like this movie a lot. I love Joe Dante. And I was really excited to see uh, Shout Factory give this a really nice special edition. So this one is highly recommended. Explorers. Um, Okay, what do we have next? Uh, This is a pretty recent one. This is The Kindred from Synapse Films. An incredible monster movie. Um, Just really unique uh from jeffrey Oberall and stephen carpenter i think who did uh the power they did the dorm to drip blood this is their most uh high budgeted film and it includes a cast uh with rod steiger kim hunter and others and yeah it's kind of like a it's kind of a mad scientist kind of movie and has some really disturbing special effects all practical stuff and really stands out in the 80s as a practical effect dynamo this comes in a nice steel book this one is a little bit expensive it's about 45 dollars but 
Synapse does really great work, and the new transfer looks incredible. This is one that I don't think I don't think ever had a DVD. Um, so I could be wrong about that, but it it definitely hasn't had anything in a long time, and is a movie that definitely deserves that. This comes with a CD soundtrack, uh, a nice booklet, and like I said, it looks great. So uh, they you know they put out Massacre at Central High. I'll talk about one of their 4Ks uh, in that video, but this one really is a gem. It's got a um, it's got audio commentary with the directors, and then it has uh, a making of the Kindred about uh, 52 minutes there, and that's great because you get to talk to a lot of the cast and the directors and all the lessons they learned, including how to speak to uh, method actors like Rod Steiger and Kim Hunter. Uh, which requires a different approach, as um, Stephen or Obrow, I think, tells the story of it in uh, that documentary. It's great. Uh, really good effects, too. Um, let's see here. What else have we got next? Um, I'll just go this way. Uh, the Little Fugitive, a really great um, early documentary-style New York film about a kid who runs away to Coney Island after he thinks he's killed his brother. Um, really love this film. This had been out on Blu-ray, uh, but now we get it as part of a set of films from Morris Engel and Ruth Orkin. So you get multiple films here. You get L Little Fugitive, Lovers and Lollipops, Weddings and Babies, and I Need a Ride to California. And I have not had a chance to see the other three films here, but I really love the work they did on Little Fugitive, and so I can't wait to dive in. And as you can see, you've got commentaries and some short films. It's a really nice package from Kino. This is a Criterion-worthy release. This is really wonderful, and I love this movie. Um, good stuff. The Little Fugitive. Next up, we have a couple from Flickr Alley. These are Argentinian film noirs, um, long sort of lost films, and... Uh, I think Bitter Stems is my favorite of the two. Uh, a great film about a newspaper journalist who meets a guy at a bar who then um, talks him into doing this correspondence journalism school to sort of fleece people for some money and then tells the journalist about his family back home and how he wants to bring them over and that he needs a little extra money and so the journalist decides to give him three quarters of the money that they're making off this deal and then starts to doubt that maybe this guy actually has a family and maybe he's trying to put one over on him and things start to twist and turn from there and has some really nice twists including one in the like last couple minutes of the movie that's great uh and yeah uh, beast must die it becomes sort of a whodunit a man is poisoned at the beginning of the film and, and we sort of go back into a procedural type thing about trying to figure out who done it and uh, equally good. Really neat to see Flick Rally continuing their work with the Film Noir Foundation and UCLA. Uh, they put out um, Woman on the Run and uh, no, what is it? No Time for Tears? No. Too Late for Tears. Uh, and one other one. Uh, so I love that they're doing this, and these have some really, really nice special features on them, including in, both have introductions by Eddie Muller, uh, both have conversations with Eddie Muller and um, this other film programmer, and they both have, you know, solid commentaries. Um, let's see here. Guido Segal does Beast Must Die. And Imogen Sarah Smith, who I'm a huge fan of, does the commentary on this one, The Bitter Stems, um, and that's great. Um, so they both come with really nice booklets. Oops, oh dear. Uh, and uh, I was just really impressed with these. Uh, if you're not on board with um, Flickr Alley, you should definitely be keeping an eye on what they're doing. They do really great restorations, and their releases are top-notch. And these two um, basically underseen lost gems are, you know, two of my favorite things they've put out in a while. So definitely worth checking out, those two. Um, one more Hawks film. This is from Imprint. This is Scarface, the original Scarface 
from 1932. And this is just a really great package from Imprint. Um, includes a commentary with Drew Casper, video interview uh, with critic Matthew Sweet. You have, um, let's see here, uh, video interview with screenwriter and film critic Tony Raines and introduction by Robert Osborne. You have the original theatrical version of the film, the alternate censored version, and you have a lot of talk about the movie itself, which, you know, is a really interesting entry in Howard Hawks' filmography and one that, um, you know, I, I've i sort of underrated over the years because it is sort of well-known and I just, coming back to it, I was reminded how great it is and how great Hawks is. And so this is a good one to go with the criminal code. Uh, perfect fit for that. So a great release from Imprint. Let's see here. Um, Brotherhood of Satan from Arrow. Uh, this is a discovery for me this year. This one I'd never seen before. All about a small town that this family ends up in that may have some satanic dealings. Uh, it's kind of a you can get in but you can't get out kind of story and features just spectacular performances from Struther Martin, LQ Jones, and others and doubled at the New Beverly with Race with the Devil, which is a great double bill that you can do at home, and I do recommend it. Uh, but this one just surprised me. I thought it was like a killer kid movie, but it is not. It is much more disturbing and haunting than that. Um, and really good stuff. And a really nice special edition from Arrow. And um, uh, this one also got an imprint um, special edition, which I may have to pick up because... I like this movie so much. It's one of my favorite discoveries of the year that I might need both versions. Um, so that's Brotherhood of Satan. Then we have one from uh, Umbrella Entertainment. This is Malcolm. This was sort of a cult item back in the day when I discovered it. it um, it's sort of all about this gentleman who is on the spectrum, I think, and he's been left a, a small house by his mother who's passed away. And he works as a, at the beginning of the film, he works for the um, subways or sort of the train company and gets himself in trouble and fired. And then he has to bring on a boarder to make up some money. And he has a real knack for gadgets and building little devices. Like he builds this thing that runs on the train tracks. And so he brings in this boarder who's kind of a questionable guy, maybe a criminal type and his girlfriend, and then it just sort of plays out from there. It's a really nice um, drama from uh, Australian filmmaker Nadia Tass. And yeah, I was really happy to see this one get a Blu-ray. I haven't seen this since VHS, and it's got some nice features on it. It's all region. Uh, Umbrella is doing some good work, and this is a nice little cult item. Next we have A Life at Stake. This is from The Film Detective. Uh, and I want to give a quick nod to them. They've just done a lot of great work this year. And this is a really neat film noir with Angela Lansbury and Keith Andes. And it's very much in the vein of double indemnity. And it definitely feels like a movie that it came out in 1955. So it's almost more than 10 years after double indemnity. And so it's playing with that idea and it has this self-awareness that I really like just this guy gets roped into a potential investment scheme and, and Angela and Lansbury is kind of the femme fatale of the movie and it just goes to some unexpected and inter interesting places um, and uh, it's got a new 4k transfer from original film archival elements uh, and that's something I wanted to point out that um, film detective has been doing since it started uh, with these Blu-rays and they all look really nice and they tend to have a commentary and a booklet um, and, you know, some other nice features. This one has uh, Hollywood Hitchhikers Inside the Filmmakers and then things like, you know, Frankenstein's Daughter uh, and The Amazing Mr. X. You know, some of these are public domain films that they're finding, um, you know, new elements for and original elements for and making new transfers and they really make them look good and they they do put together a really nice presentation so i wanted to recommend you check out film detective as they're doing some really good stuff all right 
Next up, we have Buster and Billy. This is a uh, sort of a standalone release from Zafina Media. Uh, you can get it at BusterAndBilly.com. This one is just a rare um, movie f- from Jan Michael Vincent, and it's set in the 1948 rural Georgia, 1948, and it's about this popular kid who takes a liking to the town tramp and how that complicates his relationships with his friends and the town in general and it's a really sweet movie really enjoy this one no special features but this one had only been on vhs prior to this so it got a really nice upgrade with this where the transfer looks wonderful and uh, just a movie i really like a lot from 74 i want to say i can't remember what year this came out Early 70s, I think, or, or late 70s. Uh, but good stuff. Buster and Billy. We have uh, Son of the White Mare. This is from Arbalest Films, who have been doing a lot of great stuff and who uh, really do wonderful restorations. This one has a cool, like, envelope-style slip. And uh, this one, this is... Uh, animated stuff. This is legendary Hungarian animator Marcel Jankovic's, Jankovic's, uh created his definitive masterpiece of world cinema with this psychedelic adaptation of Hungarian fairy tales. And this is just a beautiful animated Blu-ray release. This is the kind of thing, if you're into like something like Fantastic Planet, um, kind of offbeat animation and quirky stories, um, this is your jam. And not only does it include that film, but it includes some other, uh, you know, animated films from this director and some shorts. And it's a great package. And it's got a nice uh, hefty booklet in it as well. Um, but Arbalest does impeccable uh, restorations. And this is just a real delight as a discovery for me this year. So, um, Definitely recommended. Uh, I don't know if you can still get the slip or not, but regardless, this is just a great animated uh, movie to check out. All right, moving right along. Switchblade Sisters from Arrow. This one um, has gotten a previous Blu-ray, but this is the one. This is a great... Uh, I think I think it's a new scan. I want to say... Maybe not. I, I'm not sure about the new scan. But it looks really good here and has a lot of great features. Uh, it might be missing the Tarantino commentary that was on the Subculture Blu-ray. Um, but it's got a lot of good stuff and it's a great girl gang movie. And I'm just really glad Arrow brought it out because they did a wonderful job with it. And now more folks can check it out. This is Region A. This came out in the States and is highly recommended if you're into exploitation gang movies, uh, for sure. Switchblade Sisters. Um, Next up, we have Treasure of the Ninja. Uh, This one is from Agfa, and is uh, it's Treasure of the Ninja and the films of William Lee. So it's this guy, William Lee, who made a lot of films on Super 8 in the 80s, and they're very DIY in nature, and the their kung fu again sort of in the style of like a um miami connection kind of thing uh but this one is just a blast i had so much fun with this movie they do all their own you know overdubbing and sound effects so it's like almost like michael winslow sounding sound effects at times and yeah it's it's super fun um okay so this has treasure the ninja it has a commentary it has a bonus movie Dragon vs. Ninja. Um, it has a short, The Chinese Connection, and actually multiple shorts. So you get a whole package of stuff on this one, and it's definitely one of my favorite Agfa releases this year. Definitely worth your time. Treasure of the Ninja. Then we have one more from Indicator, Bingo Long, Traveling All Stars, and Motor Kings. This is Region B Locked, and it is the story of the this um baseball team in the 1930s that was part of the black league and they um are 
trying to break out on their own uh, because they all sort of being held back by their owners. And um, so Bingo Long, played by Billy D. Williams, decides to get a couple of his buddies together and start his own team. And they're kind of like a Harlem Globetrotters of baseball where they just are kind of silly, but they're really great players. And, you know, the, the team includes Richard Pryor and, um, uh, oh my gosh, I'm blanking on everything right now. Um, James Earl Jones. And yeah, it's just a really good movie. John Badham directed and it includes a really cool documentary all about uh, there was always sun shining someplace, life in the Negro Baseball League, uh, 1983, a 60-minute documentary about the real league itself. And, um, yeah, it's it's great. Um, yeah, just a, a really nice disc and a movie that I think is underappreciated and, you know, has a fantastic cast and just a good sports movie. Um, so that's Bingo Long. Then we have one from Severin. We have Siege. This one was, I thought, never going to come out on Blu-ray, um, but it is available now, and it is sort of uh, about this. Um, it's it's inspired by the 42-day Halifax police strike when a local group of right-wing vigilante vigilantes massacred uh, the patrons of a gay bar. The sole survivor seeks refuge in a nearby apartment building. I'm not sure if that's based on fact or not, but basically it becomes like sort of assault on Precinct 13 in a way, like where this gang is chasing after this guy and then he goes to this apartment and ends up involving the folks in the apartment and it kind of goes from there. And it's really solid. And um, it has audio commentary with the directors and filmmaker Jason Eisner, which is solid. But this is just one that I didn't think was going to get a release. And so hats off to Severin for putting it out. Good stuff. Siege. All right. Some stuff from Kino here. The Black Marble. This is just a movie that I like very much. It has Harry Dean Stanton. It has Paula Prentice. It has um, uh, Robert Foxworth. And it's sort of a, a police procedural mystery set in the world of uh, dog shows. Uh, basically, Harry Dean Stanton runs a dog kennel and he ends up kidnapping a, um, a dog that you know, is a big prize winner and wants to get a ransom for it. And the woman calls the cops and Foxworth, who is a drunk, um, decides that he's going to take on this case and Paula Prentice is his new partner and she's not excited about that. And they start to, um, you know, become friendlier and yeah, I just really love this movie. Um, it is based on the Joseph, uh, Womba novel. Uh, and yeah, I like it a lot. It's got, it's a new 4k restoration from the original camera negative and includes a commentary with Harold Becker, I think from the anchor Bay DVD, but anyway, it's two, three, five to one. Great mystery movie. I'm a big fan. Okay. Um, more from Kino. We have Buried Alive. This is again, sort of a film noir type where we have Tim Matheson as a guy who's transported his wife played by Jennifer Jason Lee from the city to the country, to his hometown where he's got a thriving, I want to say contracting business maybe. And he builds a beautiful house for them, but she is bored and sick of it and starts to get involved with a doctor that she's seen there, played by William Atherton, who is absolutely perfect in this. And they contrive a plot to kill him, but it doesn't work out. And that's all I'm going to say about it. Uh, it also stars uh, Hoyt Axton as the local sheriff, and he is fantastic. If you don't remember him, he's the dad from Gremlins. Um, but what's really neat about this is that it is basically the feature debut of Frank Darabont. It's a TV movie, um, but it's prior to any of his other feature work. And it's just really well put together. And this has an audio commentary with Brian Reisman, uh, entertainment journalist, and also an interview with William Atherton, which is great. So uh, really good stuff. Buried Alive. Uh, another noir, alias Nick Beale. This one is a Joe Dante favorite, directed by John Farrow and starring Raymond Land, Audrey Totter, 
and Thomas Mitchell. Thomas Mitchell plays like a uh, district attorney who's vying for the, he wants to be governor and he meets this guy who seems to have some strange influence and seems to be able to tell him just what he needs to know when he needs to know it. And so this is a very Faustian tale and that's all I'm going to say about it, but it's a really great performance from Ray Land and a good sort of supernatural noir. Uh, this one has a commentary by Eddie Muller. Um, shifting gears from Kino, we have The Wildlife. Uh, this is an 80s gem that's a sister film to Fast Times at Ridgemont High. This is written by Cameron Crowe and feels of a piece with Fast Times. Um, we have some different characters. We have Eric Stoltz, who plays a guy who's moving out of his parents' house into his own apartment after graduating from high school. And he has a freeloading friend played by Chris Penn, who is struggling with uh, <clears throat> his girlfriend, Jenny Wright. Uh, and Leah Thompson is sort of an on-again, off-again girlfriend for Eric Stoltz. And Alon Mitchell-Smith from Weird Science is the little brother to Stoltz. And Hart Bachner is a cop. Rick Moranis is a sleazy a department store um, boss and I'm a big fan this one had had some problems with the soundtrack and I don't think they've ever been fully corrected in terms of the blu-ray and DVD releases but that said this is uh, as good as it's gonna get and it still has a relatively intact soundtrack and I'm a big fan of this release and this movie so definitely check this one out couple more from Kino. We have Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid, uh, the classic from uh, Carl Reiner, where Steve Martin plays a detective named Rigby Reardon, and the gimmick is that he is interacting with old clips of black and white films uh, and other actors like Cary Grant, Humphrey Bogart, uh, you know, lots of others, and it's just amazing what they've done. Michael Chapman shot this movie and he did it in such a way that the um, black and white footage nearly matches the um, footage of the old black and white film. So it's almost seamless. But it's a great spoof on noir and just a really funny movie and one I adore. This has a commentary with Alan Arkish and uh, Daniel Creamer, which is fun. They go through sort of the clips in the film and point out which is which and um, offer a lot of other insights. But I, one of my favorite comedies, so I love that. This got another nice release. And then a discovery for me this year was this one, The Victim, part of a trio of TV movies. Actually, Kino put out a lot of TV movies this year. Um, but this one is about uh, Elizabeth Montgomery, and she's trying to keep an eye on her younger sister who lives in a remote uh, sort of mansion. And at the beginning of the film, she calls her on the phone, and she finds out she's about to be divorced. And then... She says she's going to come visit her. Sister says, don't do that. All the while, we see somebody's watching the sister. And then after that, um, Elizabeth Montgomery calls back and she can't get her sister anymore. So something may have happened. And so Elizabeth Montgomery goes to see her at the house. And then it becomes sort of this proto slasher thing. It's not quite Friday the 13th, but um, it's a it's a very f enjoyable, suspenseful um, slashery type movie and I really dug this a lot uh, this has a commentary with film historian uh, uh, and, and author Amanda Reyes and that's great as well but this is a real discovery for me hats off to Kino for bringing this one out so that's it for Kino one more from Indicator this is also Region B Things Change this is David Mamet and maybe my favorite David Mamet film um, it's not too dissimilar to something like The Last Detail, where in this case we have a, I want to say he's a shoemaker or a shoe repair guy or something, or a tailor, I can't remember, played by Don Amici, who um, is asked by this high-level mobster to take the fall for one of his guys and go to jail um, as a, you know, a big favor and Joe Montana plays like a lower level mobster who is meant to keep an eye on him and get him to his court date so he can go to jail, but decides he's going to take him on a like final tour, uh, a really nice trip, uh, including staying at nice hotels and all kinds of stuff. And 
it's a charming movie and it definitely has an edge to it, but um, great mammoth dialogue and great characters and a movie I just really adore. Um, and some nice features on this one as well. So that is Things Change. We have Breakdown. This one came out from Imprint this year as well, but I think this is my preferred edition. Uh, just a fantastic thriller from 97 uh, that um, stars Kurt Russell as a guy who's on the road with his wife when his car breaks down. His wife gets a ride from a trucker into town. Then when Kurt Russell is able to get the car started, he goes into town and his wife is gone and he runs into the trucker and he pretends he's never seen him before. And then it becomes like a what happened to my wife, lady vanishes kind of thing. And this is just a really, really solid thriller from Jonathan Mostow. And so this has a new filmmaker focus with Mostow, commentary with Jonathan Mostow and Kurt Russell that's brand new. And I don't know about you, but I love a Kurt Russell commentary. And this one is really solid. Um, and then, uh, an interview with Kathleen Quinlan and Mar Martha De Laurentiis and more. They actually have the alternate opening to the film from, uh, Mostow's VHS, I think. And it's interesting because they ended up not using it for good reason, but he gives commentary over the thing and, you know, tells you why they didn't use it. But great thriller. Great to have that on Blu-ray. A couple more from Imprint. We have Drugstore Cowboy. This is, um... The film from uh, Gus Van Sant, probably my favorite Van Sant film about a bunch of drug users who basically rip off drug stores to fill their habit. Uh, the main two are played by Matt Dillon and Kelly Lynch, uh, but they are joined by James Legro and Heather Graham as two others. Um, this one is... Uh, it's, a, it's a downbeat movie, but it's a great Matt Dillon performance, and actually everybody's great in it, and... Um, you know, even William Burroughs shows up at one point. Uh, but I'm a big fan of this one. And this ports over a lot of the features from the previous DVD. Um, but there is a new visual essay by Chris O'Neill, which is cool. And uh, a new um, scoring the film featurette, as well as a Kelly Lynch interview. Uh, so really good stuff, region free. And for the first time on Blu-ray from Imprint. Next up. We have The Straight Story, also from Imprint, also on Blu-ray for the first time. David Lynch's film, basically pretty unlike anything else he ever made, about a guy um, played by the great uh, Richard Farnsworth who finds out his brother, uh, Harry Dean Stanton, is dying. He has no way to get to him except on his riding mower. And that's based, again, on a real guy that did this. And so he drives across country on his mower and it's a really sweet story uh just one of lynch's best and made for disney um this has a new commentary actually all new features and uh a really nice package overall uh and a nice transfer studio canal did the scan and it's new new restored in 4k it looks great first time on blu-ray uh the straight story from imprint and then i've got a bunch of um well, let me do let me do this first. Uh, Bad News Bears. This one came out from Imprint as well, but I prefer this Paramount version. Um, this one had not been on Blu-ray prior to this year, and uh, so you get um, the movie, which is really great, and then you get Kevin Smith on the Bad News Bears, Jackie O'Haley on the Bad News Bears, um, Stanley Jaffe, the producer, and then some of Jackie O'Haley's home movies also included in this disc, and it looks great. And it's wonderful to have this film finally on Blu-ray. So And cheap, too. This is inexpensive, that one. So that is the Bad News Bears. And then I've got a bunch from uh, from Warner Archive. I'm, I'm going to close out with Warner Archive. Um, and uh, they just had a banger of a year, just putting out some of my favorite films that they've had in their vault for a while. And this is at the top of the list, Straight Time with Dustin Hoffman. Uh, all about an ex-convict uh, named Max Dembo that Hoffman plays and how he tries to get out of, he gets out of jail and tries to go straight and his parole officer played by um, M. Emmett Walsh is not going to make it easy for him. Uh, and he's got buddies played by Gary Busey and Harry Dean Stanton 
and uh, Teresa Russell is his sort of love interest. Kathy Bates is Gary Busey's wife. It's great. It's just a great story of a guy living his life after jail, and it's based on a novel by Eddie Bunker, who is in the film and who also uh, went to jail and was a you know product of the system, if you will, and you know was always uh, aware of the life that uh, this kind of person lives as it was his life. So very good stuff and includes the features from the DVD, a commentary by Dustin Hoffman and the director, and a vintage featurette as well. Looks great. <clears throat> so happy to have that one. Another like it, uh, Prince of the City. This is Sidney Lumet's film with Treat Williams and others about uh, a cop named Daniel Cello who is part of a special unit that is given a certain amount of freedom to make bus, uh, drug bus and, and stuff, and they start to go a little outside the law and um, sort of the internal investigations that start to happen and how he decides to, you know, turn on his buddies. And um, it's an epically long movie, but it is absolutely riveting. And just, an I think, an incredible performance from... Treat Williams, one of his best, and just a great sitting the Met film. This has Prince of the City, the real story, based again. This is based on real people, uh, a real you know police unit, and so you get interviews with um, some folks that are aware of those things and the differences between the movie and real life. And uh, great, great Blu-ray, and nice to have on one disc because even the DVD was two discs because this movie's almost three hours long. Uh, so that's Prince of the City. Then we have Quick Change. Uh, great light comedy uh, heist thing with Bill Murray, Gina Davis, Randy Quaid, Jason Robards. Basically, uh, this group pulls off a great bank heist and then cannot get out of New York. And Jason Robards plays the cop that's trying to stop them. And it is you know akin to something like After Hours in terms of its lunacy. Uh, but it is just a blast directed by Howard Franklin and, and Bill Murray. Um, and yeah, I love this movie. Um, I don't think this one has any features, but it was one I was very happy to get on Blu-ray. A great comedy. Speaking of great comedies, I'm a huge fan of Night Shift, Ron Howard's Night Shift from 1982, I think, uh, with Henry Winkler and, uh, Michael Keaton and Shelley Long. Um, Winkler and Keaton work at the morgue in New York and Keaton sort of helps formulate a plan to have them become pimps for this group of prostitutes and it is a wacky R-rated comedy that I think is you know just a really great screwball like a really uh, funny movie and a really great script by Lowell Gans and Babalu Mandel and I just love it I I think it's so neat to think of uh, Fonzie being directed by Richie Cunningham in a role that is so far from Fonzie because he's a very meek, nebbish type guy who's put upon and has to sort of learn to advocate for himself. Um, but I love it, and it's long overdue on Blu-ray, so good stuff. Uh, I probably should have put this one back with the other dramas. This is a mystery movie called Last of Sheila with an incredible cast, Richard Benjamin, Diane Cannon, James Coburn, Joan Hackett, James Mason, Ian McShane, Raquel Welch. Uh, it is written by Stephen Sondheim, who has just recently passed away, and Anthony Perkins. And it is sort of based on the idea of the fact that they were really into games and putting on mysteries and games. And this one is basically a producer played by James Coburn uh, loses his wife in a hit and run accident and invites a group of people that were, I don't know, maybe could be connected to it. It's hard to know to go on his yacht with him and do this little game where they are trying to not reveal things about themselves. If that makes sense. Uh, trying to hide their secrets and yeah. And it's, it's a really interesting one. I know Ryan Johnson had cited this as a influence on Knives Out. So it's a, a great little movie and wonderful to have on Blu-ray. Ports over the commentary with Richard Benjamin, Diane Cannon, and Raquel Welch. Uh, and just looks good on Blu-ray. Really happy to have that one. And then back to comedy, we have uh, One Crazy Summer. This is Savage Steve Holland's 
follow-up film to Better Off Dead, part of the trilogy, if you will, which also includes how to get into col- uh, how I got into college. And this one is uh, silly fun, not as good as Better Off Dead, but uh, about a guy who goes to Nantucket uh, for the summer and uh, the wacky adventures he gets on while there. And this has a really great cast. John Cusack, Demi Moore, Bobcat Goldthwait, Curtis Armstrong. Um, oh, man. Uh, oh, I'm blanking on some of the others. There's a ton of good people in this. And it's just a very goofy comedy that, um, you know, Savage Steve Holland has a really specific, silly, surreal sense of humor, and this is a perfect example of it. And I know it's a fan favorite. A lot of people love this movie. And this has a commentary, a great commentary, with Curtis Armstrong, Bobcat, and Savage Steve. And I really like that track a lot. That's from the DVD. But great to have this on Blu-ray. Definitely highly recommended. And one more on the lighter side of things. Lovely to see Warner Archive continuing to put out the Thin Man movies this year. And this is my favorite of the ones they put out this year. This is the fifth, I believe, in the series. Thin Man Goes Home, where Nick and Nora go back to um, Nick's hometown, uh, rural hometown. And his dad, who wanted him to be a doctor and who is not impressed with his detectivery, uh, and uh, how um, Nora wants her dad, his dad, to appreciate him, and so she kind of stirs up a mystery, basically stirs up some people that are doing some bad stuff in this hometown, and it becomes this mystery, and uh, it's really great. Like I really like this one a lot, um, and uh, yeah, it's really solid. Uh, it has some shorts and cartoons and things. But I love that they keep doing these, and it looks like they're going to finish out the series. So that's wonderful. And then in terms of cartoons, we have the third volume of the Tex Avery Screwball Classics, which is a series I absolutely love. Um, And this one includes a bunch of more of the Tex Avery cartoon shorts. And they're all awesome in his sense of humor. And, um, I mean, he's got an edge to him as well, and it's really great. Um and no features on this one, but there is some features on the previous entries, but these look just impeccable. They look wonderful in terms of the transfers, and I think there might be enough cartoons for maybe one or two more, and I hope that these sell well enough that they do that, Um, because I have all three now, and this one is a really strong entry in terms of the cartoons, so well worth grabbing. And last but not least... The Herculoids, another uh, cartoon, this one, a series from the 1960s, um, done by Hanna-Barbera, I think, Um, and just a really cool story about a family living on this planet with uh, some crazy monsters that are their friends, and how the monsters help them fight evil, and yeah, I love this show. It's a great show, and again, as with all these cartoons... From Warner Archive, they look just outstanding, better than they've ever looked, and this is the complete series, and this one um, does include a Herculoid's first family of Planet Quasar featurette. I want to say it's less than 10 minutes, but a great um, encapsulation of um, this show and the history and where it came from and good stuff, so... That's it for my singles list. Obviously, I could go on and on and on. Uh, and I may come back with some more singles later. But this is what I got for now. Sorry this ran longer than I wanted it to. I wanted this to be half an hour. It's gone more than 50 minutes. But hopefully there's a lot in here for you to check out and potentially buy if you are in the market to do so. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, I appreciate your time. And I will talk to you soon with more of these videos. Bye-bye.